Welcome back to my channel A Learn with Kieran, in today video we will review a movie, Farah. This movie is basically about the atrocities of Israel and the inhuman torture that the Israeli occupiers have been inflicting on the innocent Palestinians. Israel is trying hard to get this movie off from Netflix and in a few days they will succeed. Before this video goes down from Netflix, we review this video so that you can see the cruel face of Israel. This is a true story that depends on a 14-year-old girl Farah, and this story is made in her own words. Please share this video as much as possible so that everyone can realize the suffering of Palestinians. So without further ado, let's get to the film's major plot. This is a picture of a little village in Palestine from 1948, just after World War II. In that village, movie starts with a scene in which few young girl were having a game of togetherness by a fountain but Farah reading a book. Farah has a deep desire to attend school and grow older. Her father, the village chief, played a significant role in the community. Farah attended the only girls' school in the village, where a priest provided instruction. On Farah's last day of classes, as customary, everyone conveyed their wishes to the cleric. It was on this occasion that Farah expressed her aspiration to move to the city for further studies. However, her hopes clashed with the views of the clergy. The upon Farah's return home, she encounters an infrequent visit from another uncle, a rarity since her mother's early demise. With the onset of the country's conflict and Israeli forces moving through their area, her uncle proposes immediate marriage to her father. While Farah's father and uncle discuss this, she discreetly listens from a distance. After bidding farewell, Farah's uncle leaves, prompting her to retreat to her room with a book. Engrossed in her studies, she unexpectedly overhears her father and teacher. Contemplating her immediate marriage due to the closure of Farah's village school. Angered, Farah confronts them, expressing her desire for higher education in the city. This sparks tension with her father. The scene shifts as Nasser, Farah's cousin, arrives with food. Despite their predetermined childhood betrothal, Farah harbors no affection for Nasser. In their village, a girl of Farah's age was getting married. Farah and her sister attended, enjoying the festivities. However, Farah's joy turned to sadness as she realized her impending marriage would mean losing her dreams. On the way home, Farah overheard her father and uncle discussing her marriage. She expressed her reluctance to her father, but he surprised her with an admission form to a city school. Ecstatic, Farah praised her father. And then Farah's eyes suddenly went down, there were some Palestinian soldiers standing there. They have come to meet Farah's father. Since her dad was a leader, he secretly helped. Those soldiers. Farah's father was talking to those soldiers, and Farah was listening from behind. After talking, the soldiers left their homes. Farah realizes something terrible is about to happen. The next morning, Farah found her father fortifying a new wall with a hidden door, sparking her curiosity about what lay beyond. In the current moment, seated on the swing, Farah and Farida share a conversation. Farah joyfully reveals that her father has agreed to enroll her in a city school, but a shadow crosses her face as she contemplates leaving her father alone. Determined, Farah promises her sister that she will return to the village after completing her studies to open a school. Suddenly, their peaceful scene is disrupted by the arrival of the Israeli army. Fleeing for their lives, the two sisters encounter Farah's uncle, who attempts to persuade them into his car. Farah staunchly refuses to leave her father, even as he intervenes, urging the uncle to take Farida to safety. Eventually relenting, Farah enters the secure vehicle. As they move away, she looks back at her father, who stands helpless on the front lines. Upon reaching safety, Farah rushes back to embrace her father, only to discover the encirclement by the Israeli forces. Realizing the dire situation, Farah's father leads her to a secret room he had built within their home. Despite Farah's pleas, he asserts his duty as a leader, promising to return. With a heavy heart, he closes the door from the outside, leaving Farah behind as he walks away. In a dimly lit room, Farah sits, surrounded by the echoes of distant guns she hears footsteps, anticipating her father's return. Calling out to him yields no response, the fading footsteps leave her defeated on the floor. As the sun sets, Farah discovers a hurricane, revealing a room with a small hole where she glimpses a shattered front gate. 
Alone, surrounded by silence, she collapses in frustration. Starving, she finds food and consumes it. Startled by footsteps again, she calls for her father, only to be engulfed by shelling and cries. Smoke fills the room, Farah stuffs bags under the door. The next morning, she peers out, filthy and isolated. Days blur into nights, she plays alone, rain soaking the surroundings. Locked in, Farah uses a corner as a makeshift washroom. Food diminishes, she eats raw potatoes. Reading her book, she finds an admission form for Farah City School. With the hurricane's oil depleting, she uses a fire extinguisher. Discovering a knife, she futilely tries to unlock the door, collapsing with grief, her chest heavy. The next morning, Farah woke to distant chatter, rushed to a hole, and saw people outside. Among them, a pregnant woman in labor, assisted by her husband, Abu Muhammad. The newborn's call to prayer was whispered by Abu Muhammad. Farah revealed herself, seeking help. Despite attempts to open the door, an Israeli car arrived, leading Abu. Muhammad's escape but his subsequent capture. Israeli forces entered, alarmed by blood drops from the delivery. Farah armed herself as the soldiers mistreated Abu Muhammad's wife and discovered his daughters. Abu Muhammad pleaded, but orders were given to kill the family, resulting in tragic silence. The masked man was Farah's father, who quietly identified himself and left. Before leaving, the commander ordered his soldiers to shoot the newborn baby as well. However, he maintains that there is no need to waste a single bullet on these Palestinians, instead kick the kid to death. The soldier also tries, but his leg gets stuck. The soldier also is a man, no matter how Yehuda he is. If the child is left alone, he will die. So he drapes her handkerchief over the baby's face, slowly suffocating it to death. It is not a narrative, it occurred to you. And, fact, the infant was only born for a few hours. Was wrong with these youngsters? Farah found herself in a state of desperation within the room filled with the incessant cries of the child. Determined to escape, she made multiple attempts to visit the infant, but all proved futile. As the child's cries gradually ceased, Farah rested near the door. The next morning, Farah discovered a pistol, filling her with newfound resolve. Inserting rounds into the weapon, she decided it was time to break free. Closing her eyes, she shot through the door, sunlight illuminating her face as the previously sealed entrance swung open. Silently, she took water from a container beside her and stared at the lifeless infant. This marked the movie's most harrowing sequence, leaving a profound impact. The child had perished, attracting flies and ants. Such a young life had entered and departed from the world we inhabit. When Farah emerged, she found the community devoid of life, replaced by the stench of death. Farah quietly rocked back and forth in her favorite chair, symbolizing the tragedy that unfolded. She released the school admission application into the air, stood up, and carefully departed, leaving behind an empty cradle and a once beautiful village. Farah embarked on a journey into the unknown. The real girl's name was Radia, who later walked to a Syrian refugee camp to share her story. Despite her persistent search, Radia never found her father. Similar stories of hardship continue to unfold on Palestinian streets. The plea is simple, close your eyes for a moment and offer a prayer for these individuals. Subscribe my channel for new videos. Thanks for watching.